In this video, I'm gonna show you how to add 100,000 followers to your personal brand and boost your revenue to six figures a month. Growing a personal brand has been made to seem way more complicated than it actually is. That's a shame because it's actually pretty straightforward when you know what to do. That's why in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to build a powerful personal brand grow your audience and increase your revenue. So you can just copy what I've done to grow an audience of over 500K subscribers across my channels and earn multiple seven figures worth of revenue and profit from my different businesses. So my promise to you is this, if you watch this entire video, you will know everything you need to know about how to grow your personal brand, your audience and your revenue by the end. So here's what we're gonna cover. First, how to craft a personal brand that's authentic and magnetic. Something that your ideal audience can't help but wanna follow, making you the talk of your industry. Next, what type of content to post and how to make each piece attract more of your ideal audience so you're able to get in front of as many people as possible and grow your audience and your revenue as fast as possible. And then how to lead and guide your audience to an offer of your very own so that you're able to maximize your profits to well over $100,000 a month, just like I've done multiple times without needing millions of followers. So sit back, grab a pen and notepad, maybe some coffee, because I've got a ton of free value for you here in this video. So let's dive in. The reason you need a strategy around growing your personal brand is because if you don't take control of what you do, who you are, and what you wanna be known for, then other people are gonna do that for you. And you might not like what they come up with, labeling you with titles and making associations with you and your brand that you don't agree with or believe in. Because the fact is you already have a personal brand, whether you want to or not, because your brand isn't your logo, it's not your website or anything like that. It's actually what other people think of when they think of you. A personal brand is an idea, a perception, a judgment, a feeling that someone gets when they think about you and who you are and what you do. This is why the first thing you need to be able to answer when it comes to building your personal brand is, what do you want to be known for? Maybe it's business, maybe it's marketing, maybe it's coaching or consulting, or fitness, or some combination of all of them. Whatever it is, you need to clearly identify what you want to be associated with and then write that down. And while your brand can and will naturally change and evolve over time, you want to make it as easy as possible for people to picture exactly what you do. And that's going to be really hard to do if your brand is just all over the place. Like say you're into yoga one week, then photography the next, then origami the week after that. Then all of a sudden you start posting all your content in Spanish. Por qué? Por qué? Pero no es bueno. Then you take up unicycling or whatever else pops into your head. Let me give you a personal example. My brand is all about marketing with a little bit of business and personal development thrown in there as sometimes it's hard to separate them. And while I may occasionally mention something like fitness or guitars or traveling, just like I'm about to do here in just a second, these topics always take a secondary role as they're not the main things that I want my brand to be associated with. That said, these other areas and interests in your life are still worth including in your content and talking about because A, they'll show that you're a real human being and not just some one dimensional robot, and B, they'll help you attract a more genuine, authentic audience, the kind of people who relate to and resonate with the same things that you do. For example, many people in my audience, and maybe this is you too, well, you value financial freedom and have having control over your time and your schedule, having the ability to travel whenever you want and essentially live life on your own terms. Well, this is why it helps to share things like how I recently got back from a two month vacation, traveling around Europe with my family, visiting Malta and Rome and Spain and Portugal and England, staying in incredible places and doing some pretty incredible and amazing things. For example, one time during the trip, we visited this monkey sanctuary thing where monkeys were hopping and jumping all over the car. And one little monkey even decided to try to rip some pieces off of it. Bad little monkey. On the other hand, you're probably not going to see a whole lot of content about me driving around in a fancy sports car because I drive a minivan. Gotta have the minivan. See, a lot of people would rent the Lamborghini, the Ferrari, the Bentley, something like that. But no, we're keeping it authentic here with the minivan. So anyway, I also don't live in a big, exciting city like New York or London or Dubai. I do visit those places occasionally, but for the most part, I live in a pretty small town on the West Coast. And with four kids and businesses to run, my day-to-day -day life probably doesn't look that exciting on the outside. I don't drink, I don't smoke, and I typically go to bed at 8 p.m. every single night. Pot of time! Anyway, another important point here as we dive deeper into personal branding is that you don't only want to clarify the things that you want to be known for, but also the ideas and the image and the overall feelings of how you want to be perceived. And this is where Patrick Hanlon's seven elements of primal branding come into play, starting with element number one, the creation story. The creation story is your origin story. It's what sets the stage for your brand and gives people a glimpse into who you are and why you do what you do. For example, a brief intro into my creation story revolves around burning out 
out and walking away from a high paying job as a business jet pilot, striking it out on my own and basically stumbling into business almost by accident, but then becoming addicted to the art and science of marketing. The creed is your belief system, your core values. It's what you stand for and what drives you. My creed is all about the power of marketing to change lives and grow businesses, and how ethical marketing actually makes you more money. The icons are the sensory touch points that make your brand recognizable. Now, these could be your logo or your color scheme or even your personal style. For me, it's my consistent use of certain imagery and themes related to marketing and entrepreneurship in pretty much all of my content. I also tend to use a lot of blue and try to stick to pretty consistent brand colors across most of my content. Who put this green plant here? <laughs> The rituals are the repeated interactions that people have with your brand, but I appreciate when we say the word rituals, often some weird and messed up things may come to mind. Oh, I think I might be in the wrong place. But it doesn't have to be that way. Rituals could be your posting schedule, or the way you engage with your audience, or the style and format of your content. For me, it's kind of a combination of all of these things, including my strange sense of humor and my unnatural love for all things marketing. Next are the pagans, non-believers, and every brand, every business has their own version of these people who simply disagree with or go against whatever it is that you're talking about. Boo, marketing sucks, dude. All right, calm down there, man. Anyway, in my case, my non-believers or pagans are those who undervalue the importance of marketing in growing any kind of business. It's also those who chase get-rich-quick schemes and how to make money overnight rather than focusing on the proven fundamentals and principles that actually lead to long-lasting business success. The sacred words are the terms and phrases that are unique to you and to your brand. Not only do they help to reinforce your brand identity, but they also create a sense of belonging and sort of insider feeling among your followers. For me, it's repeatedly saying things like the art and science of marketing, also MIA, or massive imperfect action, and of course the all-important GTKT for get them, keep them. These phrases are so important to me that I even got them tattooed right here. Finally, you have the leader, and this is the person who embodies the brand, and for a personal brand, well, this my friend, is you. You are the leader who guides them and inspires them and sets the example. So with that all sorted, the next thing that we need to figure out for you is what kind of platforms are you going to post your content on? This could be a YouTube channel, a podcast, it could be Instagram or TikTok or Facebook, even good old fashioned newsletters still work fantastic. But of all of these things, one in particular stands head and shoulders above the rest in regards to its superiority and ability to help you build your personal brand, grow your audience and increase your revenue faster than ever before. So we're going to talk on that later. Bit of a cliffhanger there for you. But for now, just think of one, two, and maybe at most three different platforms that you're interested in where your ideal audience spends a lot of time on. After all, you don't want to be making your life way more difficult than it needs to be by focusing your entire content strategy on a platform where none of your audience ever actually goes. We also need to talk about how to engage your audience, which is an all important factor in building that no like and trust factor that's going to lead to long term growth and sustainability for your brand. To give you an example of what this looks like, well, for the first five years of growing my personal brand, I responded to every single comment and DM and email that I received. Even today, I still do live streams on my YouTube channel and show up regularly in my agency accelerator community that's designed to help agency owners grow and get more clients. So you want to do the same thing and have a strategy on how you're going to find and then connect and engage with your audience wherever they may be. The more people you attract, the more you connect with them and the more value that you provide to them, the better all of your business and your life and your brand are going to become. And while the content that you post and the things that you talk about are naturally going to reflect your personality and your experiences and your ideas and your beliefs, you always want to keep in mind that it's your audience that you're there to serve. And the better that you're able to create helpful, valuable, and interesting content that's relevant to them, the better you're going to do. And this is especially important today considering the power that the almighty algorithms... Well, that was creepy. Anyway, algorithms, they got a lot of power. And once platforms and the algorithms behind them, like YouTube and Instagram and Facebook and basically every other social media platform out there, starts to identify who are the active and engaged members of your community, they're gonna do everything in their power to go out and find more people exactly like them to help get your content in front of. And the fuel that feeds this fire is of course, content. So next let's talk about the best kind of content you wanna be creating in order to grow your audience faster. First off here, we need to talk about content types or the different kinds of media that you can create as everyone's gonna gravitate to a different kind of content, whether it's audio or video. And they all have their own advantages and disadvantages. 
For example, text works on pretty much every single platform and can be created quickly and easily. Audio, like that of a podcast, tends to get listened to for longer periods of time and also tends to attract a wealthier and more educated audience. But video, well, Video is still king. Video is most people's preferred form of content to consume. It gives you the most flexibility as a creator in that you can rip the audio out for a podcast. You can transcribe that for text to use as a blog, an email, or social media post. And of course, that video can also be spliced and diced and posted all over the place as reels and shorts and TikToks and anything else you can think of. This is why it's hard not to recommend making video the central or core piece of your entire personal brand building strategy. I mean, if you just hate it and can't stand the thought of being on video, or Maybe you're just an absolutely amazing writer and you really want to push for a newsletter instead, then sure, maybe put video on the back burner for now. Just realize that even people who got their start with writing, like Mark Manson and Ryan Holiday and Cal Newport, well, they all now have a very solid video presence. Okay, the next thing we need to cover is, so Adam, how do I come up with good ideas for my content? Great question, other Adam. Great question. And while I'm happy to share a few easy win content ideas like creating lists and how-tos and interviews or story-based posts, the real success is gonna come by understanding that your content needs to be focused on answering two things. Who is your target audience and what is the value that you provide to them? The simple fact is, the better that you understand who you're creating content for, the better all of your content is going to do because you're going to make sure that it addresses their pains and their problems and their fears and frustrations and provides adequate and informed formative solutions to all of those problems. For example, let's take myself as a professional marketer. On my second channel, my target audience is marketing agency owners, and I teach them how to get clients and create effective marketing campaigns and grow their marketing agencies to six or seven figures. The beauty is once I've nailed down who my target audience is and the kind of value that I'm able to provide to them, next I can think of all the different content buckets and ideas for content and stories and tutorials that I'm able to provide to them. I can do a little bit of market research and see what blogs are targeting my audience. I can see exactly what other YouTube channels in that space are doing and which pieces of their content are getting a lot more traction than others. And I can look up popular books on Amazon to see what titles and authors and concepts are popping off and getting far more attention than everything else in that space. I don't think I've ever said popping off before but I kind of like it. The point is that there is always someone that you can look to for ideas and inspiration, someone that you can model after. Now, a quick warning about this approach is that you obviously don't want to join the legions of others who are simply plagiarizing and copycatting other people, just ripping off their stuff completely. Obviously, it's illegal and immoral and unethical, but there's also another damaging side to it, which is that at best, you're gonna come off as a second-rate version of them, rather than the first-rate version of your true, wonderful, amazing self. And of course, the way to stand out and to build a strong and lasting personal brand is to be authentically you. And on the topic of being authentically you, another mistake that far too many people make when trying to grow their personal brand is trying to be someone that they're not, trying to be someone that they think other people will like rather than who they truly are. Sadly, all that does is lead to frustration and inauthentic content that again comes off like a second-rate version of someone else. So never be afraid to be your true, weird, and wonderful self, which also leads to finding the next piece of the puzzle, which is what I call your edge. So let me give you an example of what that looks like. Seeing as we've already been talking about it, let's take another look at my Agency Accelerator YouTube channel, where, as I've already mentioned, it's a very niche channel around helping marketing agency owners grow to six or seven figures. Now again, it's a very niche audience, but I do have an edge edge there as I've personally grown multiple agencies to that seven figure mark with my last agency hitting 100k a month in just the first 30 days alone. And not only have I spent more than a decade doing this, I've also spent years creating training and programs and courses that teach people how to do this exact same thing with their own agencies. So I'm pretty passionate about it. Therefore, I make videos on that topic on that channel for that audience talking about things that I know and I love and I've done before. And naturally, this makes the entire process of creating this content a whole lot easier, a whole lot faster, and a whole lot more fun. And that, my friend, is one of the biggest keys that I can give you. Creating content about things that you know and you love and you're interested in and ideally have done before or have some experience in is going to make the entire process significantly easier and faster and more profitable. Okay, next let's talk about how you can use all of this to make some money and grow your revenue. Once you've grown your personal brand and your audience, next you're gonna wanna start monetizing because money fuels the mission. And the more money you make, the more people that you're going to be able to help 
and serve. Also, you may be quite happy to know that in order to have a successful personal brand, you do not need millions or hundreds of thousands or even tens of thousands of followers or subscribers. I personally know many people with only a few thousand subscribers making millions of dollars a year. And sadly, I also know quite a few people with millions of subscribers and followers and giant audiences who are making less than minimum wage. So clearly a big audience does not equal big profit and a small audience doesn't always equal a small profit. Your business model matters. The products and services you decide to offer to your audience matter and your monetization strategy definitely matters. So here are two proven and incredibly profitable ways to convert your content into cash. The first option is by far the easiest and that's to sell your time using the coaching or consulting model. If you started your personal brand around teaching or talking about a specific skill, just like I did with marketing, well then it's a really easy transition to start selling your time in a coaching or consulting capacity. Essentially charging an hourly rate or putting together monthly packages that give people access to you and to your knowledge and expertise in order to help them solve problems. Now. A lot of people out there write this business model off, saying that it's not passive and it's not scalable. But the fact is, if you're good at something, there are plenty of people out there who are willing to pay you top dollar for access to your knowledge in order to help them shortcut their learning process. Plus, it can also be incredibly lucrative. For context, before I stopped offering marketing consulting services, my rate was thousands of dollars an hour, a number that I previously could have only ever dreamed of. And I was fully booked. So yes, coaching and consulting can be an incredibly profitable offer. Definitely something you want to consider. It's also one of the easiest things to get started with and start selling and acquiring clients. Next though, let's talk about the next stage in the journey, which is selling your knowledge through the courses and programs model. Here I'm talking about selling online courses and programs and memberships, communities, things like that. In other words, selling the information that you've learned by mastering valuable skills and ideally packaging that knowledge and information up into a clear, cohesive, step-by-step -step results producing package, something that helps someone achieve a specific goal. Now this model is great. It's one I've used for years and we've helped thousands of students create full-time incomes and make millions of dollars. But this is definitely not the first business model that I would start with when I was first building a personal brand and trying to grow an audience. Yes, I know the information economy and selling online courses sounds fun and sexy and it's got this passive element baked right into it. But the fact is selling online courses is actually a whole lot harder than many of the gurus are making it out to be. This is why a significantly better plan is to start with a coaching or consulting model. Yes, selling time one-on-one. -on -one. And then once you're fully booked out and you can't take on any more students, then you can start looking into building out an information product to sell to all of the people who you're unable to serve one-on-one. -on -one. And if you follow all of the advice that I've just given you, you will grow your personal brand, your audience, and your revenue so long as you put in the work and don't give up. And if you'd like to discover the best online business model for beginners to start right now, well, I've linked up a video right here that you can tap or click or do whatever you gotta do to get in there and I'll see you in there in just a second.